Today we're talking about an Old Testament hero. It's somebody that we don't read a lot about, but it was very important and significant what he did. He was a prophet, and he lived at the same time as Samuel. Actually, he was there when King David became king over Israel, and David would talk to him at times. This prophet's name was Nathan. The most significant part we read about with Nathan is when David made some horrible decisions and Nathan came and talked to him, even though it probably could have got Nathan in trouble, Nathan understood that King David was headed to even bigger trouble. So Nathan had courage. He trusted in God. He heard from God and he knew what he needed to say to David. So with courage and bravery, he stepped into the king's court and he talked to David, telling him that David had been wrong and David was in big trouble. In 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12, it tells us about King David. We often think about him as an incredible king who followed after God, and often he did. But this records where he made some horrible, selfish decisions. He saw a lady, her name was Bathsheba. He wanted her to be his wife, but she was already married. And she was married to a wonderful soldier, an incredible warrior named Uriah. Well, David wanted her to be his wife. So he sent Uriah to the front of the battle where he would know that Uriah would be killed by the enemy soldiers. And that's exactly what happened. David took Bathsheba to be his wife. And it wasn't long after that, that there was a man that was a prophet that was sent by God to speak to David. Nathan the prophet came into the courts of the king. Hey, king. <laughs> and he had a message for him. Let me tell you a story. And he told him a story about a man who owned many sheep. Duh. Duh. <laughs> and there was another man that lived close to him that only had one little lamb. Only one little lamb. He treated that lamb as if it was his own child. He loved that li little lamb. He would feed it. He would cuddle with it. He would take care of it. Oh, that's so sweet. It is. The other man that had all kinds of sheep, flocks of sheep, had a friend that came over. Hey, happy to see you. <laughs> and when that man came over, he decided, the rich man that had all the sheep, decided to put a feast together. So do you know what he did? He ordered a pizza. No, no, he did not order a pizza. He got ice cream. No, I, I don't think he got ice cream. The Bible says that he took a lamb and he slaughtered it and they prepared it so they could eat. Oh, that's okay. Well... The thing is, he didn't take one of his own lambs. He took the one from the poor man. Huh? He took the one from the poor man. The one from the poor man? Yes. That's not nice. I know. It's the only one the poor man had. Oh, that was cruel. It was cruel. It was mean. When David was told this story by the prophet, you know what David said? Uh, he said, hey, you, who is that guy? Because he's in trouble now. That's true. And the prophet looked right at David and said, you are that man. Because David had stolen something precious that had belonged to another man. That was wrong. That was wrong. It was sin. And David needed to repent and ask for forgiveness. I hope he did. And he did. Proverbs 21, 11. One who loves a pure heart and who speaks with grace will have a, the king for a friend. 2 Timothy 4, 2 says... Preach the word. 
Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. We can speak what God's Word says. We can speak the truth. Do it with patience. Do it with kindness. Do it with love. But we are supposed to speak the truth. Proverbs 27, verse 5 and 6. It's better, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. Nathan the prophet spoke to David. He said, David, you're not living the straight and narrow. You're not following God's path. Everybody else would probably look at David and say, oh, look, he's standing up for what's right. They'd say, oh, he's standing up for God and his rules. But they didn't realize something. See, God had told Nathan that David was living a life that was naughty. Naughty. See, that's a not. He's naughty. <laughs> because the Bible tells us man looks on the outward appearance. And everything might look good from the outside. But actually, God doesn't look just at the outside. God looks at the heart. And Nathan said, David, your heart is dirty with sin. You need to repent. In Jude, verse 23, it says, Snatch others from the fire and save them. That means if you see somebody headed towards destruction, you really should talk to them. Help them avoid that pain and that destruction in their lives. That's what Nathan did when he confronted King David. Luke 17, 3. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. In Ephesians 4, 15, it says, speak the truth in love. You know, there's times when people might speak what they think is the truth, but they don't do it, don't do it in a very loving way. And if you feel like you need to correct somebody... Make sure you do it in such a way that they know that you love them. In Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5 and 6, it says this, Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. What that means is sometimes you may say something that hurts somebody's feelings, but if you're telling them the truth in such a way that it's, you're telling them that to help them, and not hurt them, maybe it's the best thing to do. They will realize that you're a friend, and even if they feel wounded by what you said, it's for their good. Do it in a loving way. Speak the truth in love. 